ELFs. They've been around for around 20 patches now, and I've never really even mentioned them once. And they even have an anime now, which by the way is pretty great. So I'm going to talk about them for once. So let's talk about why you might want to invest in an elf. Elves are basically the final segment of investment for any particular team. So when we talk about a team, we're talking about maybe like a fire team, an ice team, or a lightning team. They give a very small advantage that is oftentimes not really necessary for the team to function. But what they can do is help smoothen gameplay a bit by providing a lot of utility for your team. So in terms of cost, the three-star elf is the same cost of an S-rank Valkyrie, and a two-star elf is about half. This is very expensive for a small advantage. To put in perspective, you can compare a Herster to a three-star elf. These two cost about the same. So why would you consider an elf if you only get a small advantage? And that is because the fully completed team is a lot stronger these days than before. If you fully complete one of the four types of teams, this team can actually be used in a lot of off weathers. And by off weather, I mean a weather that is not necessarily targeted for your particular team. So for example, even on the lightning weather, I use the ice team. This is because I have skipped some of the lightning gears that have came out recently. So by completing the investment of an entire team, you can actually outperform a very half-assured team. For example, the team on the right here will outperform the team on the left, even on the lightning weather. Similarly, if you didn't have a good fire team, then the team on the left here would probably outperform the team on the right. But looking over these teams, there's the question of how much the elf actually mattered. And the answer is, it did help, but not very much. And so we go back to the question of, do you want this team to be Nirvana ready or not? Because as much as I want to sugarcoat it, the small difference that the elf makes is just not enough for any content other than Nirvana. But you have to keep in mind, folks, that the teams that are currently meta are now much more expensive than they ever were. So because of that, it does make much more sense to funnel your resources into a few teams rather than many. Whether or not the elf is part of that is your decision to make. Now with all that being said, you do want to be careful with the elves. And the reason for that is because they're not necessarily future-proof. The newer elves that are being released are competing with the older elves on certain teams, so you do want to keep in mind that an early investment in an elf is not necessarily a safe one. An elf should only be considered after you finish all the gear of a certain team. Now with all that being said, let's analyze all the elves that we currently have. So first of all, we have the Jingwei elf. So Jingwei is the first elf you'll unlock, which is farmable. She deals fire damage, and the main use case of this elf is actually the healing she does. So the healing is actually pretty useful early on when you still fight bleeding in Abyss, and it's actually pretty good in the new mode Elysian Realm. Though you do want to keep in mind that the last two debuffs might screw you over in patch 5.1, but it is expected that this debuff will change as patches roll out. So just by the virtue of doing fire damage, Jingwei can actually be pretty useful against bosses like Rhymestar, which require fire damage to be dealt to the shield. Now with all that being said, I still do not recommend starring up Jingwei as a new player. And the reason why is because starring her up is actually quite costly. When you're new to the game, you don't really have infinite resource to dump. And believe it or not, as you level up and get more competitive, you would much rather have damage than healing. However, there is a Jingwei bundle in the shop. This costs Mithril, which is not a scarce resource. It also bundles with other useful resources, so you can actually grab this. Next up, we have the Blood Embrace Elf. So if you're a free-to-play player, get used to this elf, because this is the elf you'll probably be using 90% of the time. And that is because Mihoyo, for some reason, has decided no other elf will ever be farmable. Now to be fair, in the future this may change, but until we get confirmation, I do recommend getting the Blood Embrace to the max star ranking. Anyway, Blood Embrace is a physical damage elf, and it specializes in breaking physical shields. On top of this shield break, her damage output is much higher than the Jingwei elf, so that's the main reason why we use the Blood Embrace elf instead. Now, outside of free-to-play players, if you are a light to heavy spender, you may consider skipping investing in this elf, and the reason why is because the Tesla elf pretty much does everything the Blood Embrace elf does, but better. So Saloon's Elegy, the first and the oldest gacha elf in the game. So what Saloon does is a lot of ice damage. She's one of the highest, if not the highest damage of any elf. So she actually makes a lot of impact on the lower HP bosses. But overall, the main appeal of Saloon is the fact that she applies a freeze and can do freeze trauma with this. Since she actually gets this freeze at a 2-star ranking, I do not recommend going over 2-star at the moment. As you level up and get into harder content, the impact that Saloon has just gets worse and worse. We've had a lot of different things that can actually replace the freeze trauma. Just to put it into perspective, I rarely even use my 4-star Saloon. 
And because of this, I would advise people to actually just skip Saloon entirely. All right, next up we have the Book of Fushi. Fushi. So this elf supports fire teams mainly. Her ultimate will snare enemies and also provide an elemental damage debuff. That does mean it helps all elements, not just fire. And lastly, her ultimate can force the QTEs of any fire Valkyrie. Being able to force any fire QTE is probably the biggest selling point of this elf, and it's because it actually gives Fushi a good future if any fire Valkyrie's QTE is very strong. In terms of star ranking, she really doesn't get that much at 3 and 4 star, so I recommend you leave her at 2 star. Now this elf in general is just not very strong. The biggest problem is that she contributes very little outside of the ultimate. She also gets SP very slowly. Basically you start using her less and less as you get the other elves. Overall, Fushi is a good and cheap option. If you just wanted one elf at 2 star, Fushi is a decent choice. Alright, so next we have Tesla Zero. So Tesla Zero is a physical elf that more or less would completely replace the Blood Embrace elf if you decide to invest in her. This is probably the most mechanically intense elf, and by mechanically intense, I mean you press the button two times instead of one. Though keep in mind, the fact that you press the button twice can actually give you an advantage in the Elysian Realm due to the Mobius buffs. So the first part of the ultimate is a multi-punch attack. This attack actually is quite useful for shields that need multiple hits to break. We can see this with Jizo and the Herster of Sentience boss. So as she punches, she gets more crit rate over time, and once it starts glowing, she gets the maximum crit rate. Then you can use the second part of the ultimate, which is essentially a big dunk. So this second part of the ultimate is very much like the Blood Embrace ultimate, but better. It has a lot more crit rate, and it has a lot of shield break. Also, this part of the attack can bleed the enemy, which is especially useful for bosses like Dark Chi Zhen Yan. That boss takes a lot more damage when bleeding. So if you get Tesla to 3 star, you actually get a few more benefits. Most notably, we'll consider the physical damage debuff. This is actually quite a rare debuff. Basically, just think of it as 6% more damage for your team. So as of right now, the biggest difference that Tesla Zero makes is on Jizo, Dark Ji Zhan Yan, and the Herster of Sentience boss. What you might have noticed is that all three of these are Bright Knight bosses. So if you don't have or want Bright Knight, you might want to skip out on the Tesla Zero elf. But if you do, then you should definitely consider it. Overall, I would say that Tesla is one of the most impactful elves, especially for the bosses that she makes a big difference in. As of right now, my thought is if they release another physical Valkyrie that competes with Bright Knight, uh, it will most likely bundle with a new elf. So we might want to wait on that. Alright, so Bella is the next elf, and Bella is basically a lightning elf that just with the click of a button makes you do a little bit more lightning damage. She also does lightning damage herself. So with the release of the version 5.2 update, uh, we got the new elf Klein, and the big question in the room is, how does Bella hold up against Klein? In terms of team utility, Bella completely falls short. Bella provides a bit more paralyzed trauma than Klein, however paralyzed trauma hasn't been useful at all. Where Bella does win is she actually has a little bit of an advantage in raw multipliers and damage. So for those very simple rotations, Bella might actually edge out as the elf to use. However, as of right now, I have to say that Bella is not investable for any light spenders. You should only really get Bella if you think she's super cute or you're a whale. And that is because Mihoyo likes to design things around the newer stuff, so the newer elf is definitely going to be more widely applicable for the foreseeable future. Alright, the next elf is Water's Edge. So Water's Edge is the newest Ice Elf, which competes directly with Saloon's Elegy. So Water's Edge has a higher debuff value than Saloon's Elegy. This basically means that the Valkyries that you use will do more damage, if they're doing ice damage at least. The other thing that Water's Edge does is gather enemies, which in my experience is not really required or that useful. So the bigger drawback that Water's Edge has in comparison to Saloon is that there's no freeze trauma. So at first when Water's Edge came out um, and the bosses were much squishier because the disturbance was much lower, we actually saw Saloon was able to compete and actually outperform uh, Water's Edge, especially for Huodo when uh, Freeze Trauma actually mattered. However, as time went on and the disturbance kept rising, Saloon just get, got worse and worse, and we actually saw less of Huodo as time went on as well. Now that everyone has their Hackster Bunny fully raised, uh, Water's Edge pretty much always gets used over Saloon's Elegy. There are very rare cases where uh, Saloon will do better, and mostly it's because of the Huodo boss. But in my experience, the outperformance is actually quite big for Water's Edge. Um, as soon as I got Water's Edge, even the 2-star version had outperformed my 4-star Saloon. 
So as of right now, I personally recommend Water's Edge over Saloon, especially if you're trying to compete in the big leagues. The freeze trauma that Saloon provides is not that useful now. In terms of star rating, the two star is good, but the three star actually adds quite a bit of utility. It not only lengthens the debuff, but makes the debuff stronger and gives her some SP regeneration, which believe it or not is quite important. All right, next up we have Siren, which is the newest elf and is a fire elf. So generally speaking, if we're talking specifically fire teams, Siren feels a lot better to use than the Book of Fushi. In terms of functionality, they function very similarly. Siren does a lot more damage, can use her ultimate a bit more, and the debuff is a bit stronger. Siren's ultimate also ignites the enemy. Both of the relevant fire damage dealers use the ignite QTE, so she actually can proc the QTE that you need. So on top of all of this, Siren also has a shield break passive, which is probably going to be most relevant on those elemental shields. So even though I say all of this, in my experience, the difference between the two elves is not that big. In fact, there are many cases where you might find that you get exactly the same result. So theoretically, if you already had Fushi, then Siren is just a min-max upgrade. Of course, if we speak specifically about fire teams, then Siren is a better option. But to be completely honest, the difference is small enough that I can just say that either one will work just fine. Though this is certainly something that will develop more as more fire Valkyries are released. And now, of course, the latest elf, Klein. Klein is very interesting because she provides a lot of team utility. The first unique thing that Klein provides is lowering the switch cooldown of your Valkyries. Now the first thing to note is that this is not as OP as people think. Firstly, it can be useful in the quick setups of Memorial Arena. However, in the longer fights, something like this only really makes a big difference when all three Valkyries would be spamming QTEs, so most likely you're not going to see Klein be used outside of the Lightning teams in Abyss. Probably the most important thing that Klein provides is her 3 star upgrade, which is Klein will force the QTE of any Lightning Valkyrie. Now this is extremely useful, especially in conjunction with the switch cooldown reduction. Very often on lightning teams, it's very inconvenient to get the QTE of the next Valkyrie. This is less of a problem on the old school teams, but even on those teams, it can be useful. Where it really makes a difference is on the newer teams that use Fischl and Fallen Rosemary. The biggest drawback of Fischl is that you can't really transition Fischl to Fallen Rosemary very conveniently. With the 3 star Klein, this team feels a lot more complete and plays a lot smoother. The other thing to note is that the debuffs that Klein provides is almost the same as Bella. There's a small difference in how the duration is handled and the buffs that are provided. Bella will actually outperform in cases where none of the utility is useful from Klein, but in most cases I think the pure utility that Klein provides will just outclass Bella for the foreseeable future. And that covers pretty much all of the current elves we have. My biggest hope for elves is that Mihoyo makes them more accessible, but we'll have to see if that ever happens. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the future.